Good morning. My name is Todd Hicks, and welcome back to another session of Turf Tips. This week, the weather's finally dropped. What we've all feared has finally come. Well, feared if you're a manager of grass, not a pathologist. The heat's coming. It looks like uh, between four to six days of 90 degree plus weather. <clears throat> Some of the weather forecasts include heat, heat indexes up around 100 degrees. Nights are going to run around 70 to 75 degrees. Um, this is not good. If you've not followed or maintained a good water pattern, take a look and see where you're at right now before this hits us. If you get behind the eight ball with your watering, you're really going to be in trouble for the rest of the summer. Also with this heat coming in, it looks like Monday and Friday is a great chance of heavy rain showers coming in. With these storms coming in, we stand a good chance of humidity being attached to those storms. Dollar spot could explode over the week. Also look out for patch diseases and pythium. We've had a sample of pythium in already from a sports surf area. Um, if this temperatures rise like this, you get some wet areas that you haven't treated or your hot spots, uh, you could be in trouble. So make sure you've sprayed, sprayed, sprayed your coverage for dollar spot, patch diseases and pythium. Hello, I'm Joe Rimmelspach at Ohio State University in the Department of Plant Pathology. And we're outside here at the OTF research facility on a fine summer morning. Uh, Todd mentioned in his video uh, Pythium starting and we had a case this week of an uh, athletic field, a highly maintained athletic field, 100% ryegrass, and they had applied uh, products last year, last week because they were concerned of diseases. Um, they weren't sure what it was so they applied a combination of propiconazole, chlorothalonil, and iprodiome. Well, they still were seeing uh, little areas with clear mycelium fungal growth on leaf tips and so they collected a sample and sent it to me and uh, this is the sample part of it right here and uh, Brian will have a close-up of this but basically we looked at it um, it looked like he should have been covered for most diseases and of course lo and behold we put it under microscope and it's all pythium which really surprised me earlier this week because it really wasn't that warm and I think the key thing to remember is uh, we look oftentimes at just one factor on how that can drive or produce a disease. In the case of pythium, we know we need usually high temperatures and abundant moisture. It's a water mold. But in this case, I think because the turf was so lush, remember the host, the condition of the host is very important as far as disease outbreak. It was very wet for a number of reasons and um, being highly maintained, very lush, and basically pythium had a start and it exploded. In this sample, we just bagged it overnight, put it in what we call a growth chamber one night, and as you can see from the close-up, it was just completely overrun with pythium. Uh, the good news is they made an application the same day we made a diagnosis, and uh, they were clean. Now, another thing I wanna follow up from last week's um, video is we talked about stemminess, especially on some bluegrasses and ryegrasses. And we have a case here, These are two, there's two plots here that I'm standing on that were seeded to 100% ryegrass for some research work last June. So they're about a year old. Uh, the one over here is almost all green, looks fairly good. This one has tremendous amount of brown and, and most of this is all caused by these stems, these seed hem or stalky stems. And so the point I wanna make is if you're experiencing a lot of stemminess in lawns, it really can be driven by the genetics of the turf that you're dealing with. So in this situation, obviously, it produces a lot more stem tissue for seeds or stalks versus this over here. And as a result, we're having a, a persistent amount of these stems. Now, the one thing we've tried to talk about some, as I know some turf managers will slightly lower the mowing height, one mowing, to cut down some of these stems, if they can cut them, that is, and then raise it back up and try to mask over the damage. So I just wanna um, encourage you to keep a close eye on your turf as we have summer conditions moving in. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us and always check our website for additional information at turfdisease.osu.edu. Thank you.